Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as I give a recap of the Netflix original docu-series Tiger King, episode one entitled Not Your Average Joe. Now I received a few DMs on my Instagram saying, hey Bunny, I really want to watch this series, but I don't have time. Can you break it down for me? I got you covered during this quarantine season and I'll make sure to give a recap of the entire episode with photos offset to the side. I'll also give my review in the comments. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny. The premise of this docu-series is Joe Exotic. He is accused of murder for hire of Carol Baskin, and he could be looking up to 80 years in prison. So it all began with Eric Good. He is a filmmaker, and he had no idea that when he started to do more research about Joe Exotic, that it would take him over five years, and it just dove him deeper and deeper into research. It all began in communications with a reptile dealer and someone wanted to buy a reptile. And before the person left, he showed this snow exotic leopard in the back of a van. And Eric thought to himself, what is this snow leopard doing in the back of this van and over a hundred degree heat? It sent him out on this research journey of the hows and the whys of people keeping exotic animals especially in the United States. So he runs across Joe Exotic at around 1999, and he has over 187 big cats, along with other exotic animals. We're introduced to several others that are on Joe Exotic's staff. We have Eric Coey, he is the head keeper, John Renicky, he's the manager, and Kelsey Safe Safery, who is an animal keeper as well. So they give their opinions about Joe and how much of a good guy he is and how much he took chances on people of his staff to be involved with this park. They claim that he's this really good guy that just really wanted to take a chance in preserving animals, especially exotic ones. Joe even did live shows and he had minimal followers, but he would talk about rescue life. If there was anybody that Joe couldn't stand, his staff said the one person that he really couldn't stomach was Carol Baskin. And Carol, she really didn't believe that big cats should be kept in cages. She made it clear that Joe was this exotic owner who was doing animals wrong and wanted to expose him for breeding cats for financial gains. Her main focus is to end the captivity of wild cats and she wants to fix the problem and a lot of people are having eyes on her as this main focus in awareness. Joe is making a lot of financial gain from this park. He has shops with sex toys, sex gels, shirts, underwear, magazines, and he even has music albums with videos. Um, we also learned that Joe has a husband, John Finley, and he talks about how John and Joe are lovers and they've always loved one another. Joe goes into detail about his battle with coming out and being gay. He said that when he mentioned that he was gay to his father, his father made him shake his hand in front of his mother, agreeing that he wouldn't come to his funeral. So he had a lot of depression with that and his father hearing of the information that he was gay and it led him into a deep depression, which made him drive off of a bridge. He broke his back and while he was in recovery, he was greeted with exotic animals that helped him go through his process of rehabilitation. His love for exotic animals grew and he couldn't understand why animal activists didn't want him having exotic animals. So then we have Doc Antle. He is in South Carolina. He is another breeder and he has a preserve as well. His perspective of his preserve is this interactive, uncaged experience that his audience can have. He feels that he's the most experienced and he is well known in his area and Joe learned a lot from Doc and tried to kind of imitate the experience on his preserve as well. Joe wanted people to understand wildlife 
And he thought that this would give more exposure in people learning about exotic animals and their status. Well, we do have Doc. He's not showing this for free. The starting point of this experience on his preserve is about $339. Joe and Doc, they expressed that keeping the animals fed is a challenge. And we can kind of have the idea that Doc kind of has his preserve a little bit more in the way of in order and having the funding and him, him being a little bit more well known in his area. But Joe talks about how it's kind of difficult and all of his shows per se to a lot of his customers is really important because this is how they feed the animals it, it costs close to a quarter of a million dollars just to feed the animals and they really depended on dead cows that were reported along the freeway or the roads and livestock that had been hit um, by a car. So they were really going above and beyond to make sure that they could collect whatever they could just to feed the animals. Later on, in memory of his brother that passed away, he started the D GW Exotic Animal Foundation. And he noticed that when he started to get more towards saying no to drugs and talking to kids, he really couldn't get the kids attention. Attention. So after a while, he started to do magic shows, and then that caught the attention of children more. Then he had someone to help him, which was a kid that was about nine or 10 years old, which was J.P. Wilson, and it helped to bring more awareness and more attention to the shows. Then he started to add these exotic animals, having shows at the mall, and then evolving into what we know as the name as Joe Exotic. He would start to have more pop-up pet shows at the local malls. And Carol says that this was a problem because he was packing a lot of exotic animals into this one semi-truck. They would make 10 to 20 grand each appearance at the mall for pictures, pet, pet stop, pet stops as they would call them and Susan Bass is hired by Carol's team to help them investigate where they were going what malls they were attending to what venues wherever they could go kind of this detective detective-esque search tracking where Joe and his team went after that Carol's team started developing emails and sending those emails to the malls, letters explaining that, hey, you can't let this happen. He's packing exotic animals into these trucks. And before she knew it, she had this large fan base, base which grew, which developed even more emails and more letters. From there, venues and malls started to be convinced that, hey, maybe we shouldn't allow Joe and his crew to have these shows. So then there was this decline of Joe and his team having these shows and these pop-up shops and the staff reports that that led to a lot of money being lost and even money that they were depending on for the entire winter but Joe would find ways to make more money and the way that he did that was he wanted a pet cuddle time one-on-one -on -one experience with the animals but Carol says that this, quote, taking photos is even more dangerous than keeping them in cages because this is increasing the demand for more exotic appearances. And this would lead for more exotic animals to be detained. So then we had this very popular phenomenon that was called tiger selfies, um, which was really popular on an app called tender so much show so talk shows would talk about it and make jokes and it featured people taking photos of exotic animals and this would give them more attention on this app called tender so popular so much so that Shaquille O'Neal mentioned several times that on his days off that he would attend visits to Joe Exotic and it even led him to purchase two exotic animals even Doc goes into his experiences on Jay Leno and he states that these appearances led to Hollywood contacting him, which got him gigs on Ace Ventura, 
The Jungle Book, Dr. Doolittle. So now he's amping up more into Hollywood, which encourages him more to keep more exotic animals, more photo ops, more playtime, more cuddle time at his preserve. Carol goes into detail about liability and says that when people get these exotic animals, more specifically big cats, you have this time frame from newborn to about six weeks old when it's like, okay, we haven't really reached super duper danger zone yet. But going from 12 weeks and older, they're getting to the dangerous point where they can take off a finger or two and it calls for more liability. And when people don't understand that, now they have this adult two to three hundred pound big cat that people bring to her preserve and say, hey, I can't I can't handle this anymore. Here you go. She states that government regulations on private possessions of these big cats allows this to keep going. It allows allows larger quantities of captivity and exotic animals being purposely released when people don't know what to do with them. And this puts people in neighborhoods in danger. And we do see several clips of wake up calls from police forces that have certain loose animals from when those owners released them and now they're in neighborhoods and then they're a force to kill these animals because now they're point they're a wild animal and there's no point of containment and they have to get them down to keep everybody safe and doc then goes into this realm of appearing on news stations saying hey it's it's the way that they kept those animals and the way that they took care of those animals keeping exotic animals isn't dangerous it's the way they were taking care of them. If you're not taking care of them correctly, then yes, this is going to put people in danger. And yes, this may encourage people to, quote unquote, dispose of them in this dangerous way. So he was on this journey and trying to convince people, don't let what people are saying, saying this is dangerous and people shouldn't keep exotic animals because this doesn't apply to everyone. Joe agrees with a lot of the statements that Doc makes, and he wants people to understand that, hey, it's not dangerous. I take care of my animals. Don't try to be convinced by people and saying that this is how we all are, that we're abusing these animals in some way. Although we have the evolution of advocates that are trying to pass a big cat act, which would destroy private parks and venues. Unfortunately, with that, Joe becomes more paranoid. He is more worried and he starts to say statements that get a lot of people concerned. A lot of the things he would say on his shows, videos that he would make seemed very harsh and threatening at times. Um, quotes like, if you're on my preserve, you won't live. Uh, you you won't go to live to see another day if you think that you can be on my property. When speaking of Carol, he refers to her as the B word. Um, and it starts to just evolve this development of hate. His staff notices it. Uh, police uh, forces start to notice it. And they are really seeing a lot of red flags in his behavior because he is pretty much in this corner of, wow, the, all of these activists are are starting to destroy my way of life. I'm starting to feel that there are more people coming on the property to take photos, to see what we're doing. So we do see that he purchases guns. He goes to gun, sh gun, gun shops, uh, all of these things. So for, uh, when we get to that, we do have a sheriff that expresses that uh, Sheriff Rhodes, that since Joe walked into my office, it has been nonstop with this guy. Um, he, quote, um, he's doing things that are concerning people that work in the park and come to the park. He's paranoid. He s seems more threatening to others, saying that he's going to do things to others, that he's going to shoot others. And one of the main statements that he made was that he was going to behave like another Waco. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Familiar about Waco. Of course, there was a terrorist event where a man held a lot of people captive. And when the police were getting closer and closer to that area, you know, they just went gunshot crazy and, you know, went back and forth with police enforcement. So now the police force and the sheriff 
of Oklahoma are really getting paranoid and thinking, if we have another complaint, if we get another call, when the police go to the venue, when we go to the park, are we going to have more problems? Is it going to be a shootout? Um, people would send hate mail to the police force saying that they were, con you know, going to do something to Joe and they, something should be done about it. Um, he feels that Carol is the main source of why Peter Joe does, uh, is wanting to shut him down. Um, he always keeps a weapon as well as Doc. Doc is saying these same things, too, that he is more encouraged to carry weapons. His staff carries weapons because they don't want anyone on the premises and they don't want anyone around their animals. The sheriff says that they have up to 40 to 50 police re reports that come in all the time with photos and hate mail. So it's a lot of people that have issues with Joe. The flip side of that is that with all the complaining, the researching, and Joe, 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 and focusing on what he's doing, Carol had a lot of people still paying to see the animals that she has, still paying to have those photo ops with the exotic animals that she has. She is just claiming as if her property has a higher quality. They have more, more room to grow. She has a friendlier staff, but she is still making a product and, and a product profit. And Doc agrees with that, saying that if you're so advocating this, you're still making a, pro a profit from it. You're still painting the picture as if everybody else is bad when you still keep your exotic animal animals in cages just like everybody else. You don't have the preservation size that is just so monstrous that it outweighs everybody else's. So it's this back and forth between Joe and Carol over a period of time that gets pretty nasty and threatening. Four years later, at the end of the episode, we see in Grady County Jail, Oklahoma, 2019, there's a call from uh, Joe. And he has this quote in saying, before this is all over, I'm going to shut down everybody. And that is the end of the first episode. What I find very interesting about this docuseries is the knowledge of how many people are in consumption of that many exotic animals and big cats. I had no idea that that many people were doing that in America. Um, and this is something that we can dis that a lot of people need to discuss because where do we draw the line in saying, okay, these are exotic animals. They need more space. They need to do their own hunting. These are not pets. Um, so it really g brings on good debates about everything. Um, just as episode one, I can make an educated guess in saying that since the topic is this hit murder on uh, Carol Baskin, we can assume that we already know there are a lot of people that she could have received threats from. There are a lot of people that could have done this. And you have to look at this with eyes saying, I want to keep my eyes open and not just be on Team Joe or Team Carol. Of course, we have six more episodes to see what is more information that we need. It did seem kind of odd that Carol was just going in, going after Joe specifically. Was she kind of, did she have this little hateration thing going on that he was making all this money and becoming so popular and she wasn't? So did she? She finds some way to kind of flip it on him and saying, hey, this guy's bad. Look at what he's doing. And she's really doing the same thing. What do you think? Uh, what do you think about Joe, Carol, Doc, all of the, the people involved in this? Should they all be shut down? Let me know what you think. I'll make sure to post up the rest of the episodes as I go along and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And so you don't miss any posts. And I don't know if you noticed, but I subscribe to whomever subscribed to me, subscribes to me. Make sure that you have on your settings that you can see who's following is subscribed to you. So you can see me subscribe back. Because a lot of people say, hey, I subscribe to you, but you haven't subscribed back. If you have the setting off, I can't see that you've subscribed to me. So make sure you, you change that setting. Also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, official bun underscore E. Until episode two, I'll see you. Bye.